Smart automation, better business. Learn how to optimize your business with Solved. Welcome back to the Solved.Cloud YouTube channel, where we're your go-to source for understanding Revenue Cloud, Agent Force, and other Salesforce topics. I'm Jared Christensen, a certified Salesforce consultant, specializing in implementing Revenue Cloud for fast-growing teams. In this video, I'll show you and start talking about context definitions and how to work with them and set them up within Revenue Cloud. They're one of the most important and confusing pieces of Revenue Cloud. So if you're building pricing logic or extending the platform, you'll really need to get this right. All right, so let's jump in talking about context definitions. And wanted to first set some expectations on what this is and what this isn't. I'm not going to do a deep dive into context definitions in this video, maybe later videos, but right now the goal is just to get you comfortable with context definitions, covering what they are, why they exist, and how you'll work with them. So what is a context definition? A context definition is kind of like the data layer, data layer in between the Salesforce objects and the DRO, or let's say the for the context of Revenue Cloud, what you'll really be working a lot with is the pricing procedure. Now, if you're like me and you're coming from CPQ, the pricing procedure is like the pricing waterfall on steroids. And so that's where all the calculations are going to happen. And for or in order for the pricing procedure to be able to reference a field or write back to a field, it's doing that all through the context definition. So here you can see that we have our Salesforce objects. This could be like quote, quote line, order, etc., And they're going to be feeding into the context definition. And so the whole point of the context definition is it gives a standard format for what the attributes are that a pricing procedure or your application need to use. And it can get that from all different places and it can write to all different places within the system or multiple systems, but it's one place that your pricing procedure needs to look at. So instead of your pricing procedure needing to look at all these different objects or possibly data cloud objects, it's only going to need to look at the context definition. And so within the context definition, we have nodes, which are like objects and attributes, which are like fields. And those attributes will have a tag and that tag is what's used in the pricing procedure. So that's a quick layout of what the context definition is and how it functions within Revenue Cloud. Now, the context definition is not specific to Revenue Cloud Advanced. It's used elsewhere and it's very, very powerful. And so I'm just touching the service here and more talking within the context of Revenue Cloud, what context definitions are used for, but that's kind of how they work in the context of Revenue Cloud and how you'll see that. Now, there are two main context definitions that you will use within Revenue Cloud, which is the sales transaction and the product discovery context definition. So the sales transaction context definition is definitely where you'll do the most work but the product discovery context definition, you'll need to touch and be familiar with a little bit. So how do we make changes to a context definition? So let's jump over to Salesforce and look into this. So what you're going to do is you're going to come into setup and you are going to search for context, context definitions. And if you don't see it, then you need to turn on context service, but you should see this. And here you can see these standard context definitions. These are active by default. You can't make any changes to them, but this is what you're going to extend to make your own custom definitions. Now, while this isn't a guide into how to set up your RLM or Open Cloud org, this is where you would come and you'd go to the sales transaction context definition and extend it. Now there's cloning and extending. You're going to want to extend because that makes it able to get upgrades when new releases come out. And once you have a cloned context definition, you can name it whatever you want, but try to keep it pretty similar to the sales transaction context definition name. 
And if I click edit, we can start seeing this structure here. So if I click next, you'll see all the different nodes. Some are child nodes, some are transposable. And I click next here, we can see their attributes that they have. So for example, the sales transaction node has all of these different attributes in it. Some align with fields on the quote, some may align with fields in the order, etc. So again, this is one place that can combine the information from a bunch of different sources in the system so that our price and procedure can use it. And if I click next, here's where you're setting up the tags for those attributes. So once you make an attribute, you'll come in here and make a new tag. All right. And then on the map data tab, this is where you can see the different mappings. The quote entities mapping is a common one that you'll use when you need to add a new field that needs to be mapped from or to the quote quote line object. And so I'll show that here. I'm going to click and then click map. Here we get a really cool view where we're able to see what is mapping to what. You can filter this down using these search boxes here, but when you make a new field and you make a new tag, then your field will show up in the node that you set it, that you created it in, in the unmapped section. And that's where you can then map it to a quote field that you made, for example. The next thing I'll show you is in the pressing procedure here, when you come to do anything within the pricing procedure and you need to use a field. Again, you're not referencing the field on the object. You're referencing the tag in the context definition. So like, for example, if I search date here, all these fields that you're seeing are actually attributes. And this is their tag that you're referencing. And that's why it's so important to use and understand the context definitions because they're really going to be used quite a lot within Revenue Cloud to be able to add new fields that should influence pricing, change other fields and how they're influencing pricing and working with the pricing procedure, which is quite a powerful tool. So thanks for watching. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe and please uh, comment below if you have any questions. We really tried hard to answer questions in the comments as quickly as we can. And we've gotten a lot of great questions, so please continue to ask questions in the comments and we will continue to try to answer them to the best of our ability as we're keeping up to date with these new Salesforce Revenue Cloud releases. So go check out our other videos on context definitions, mapping fields, doing things like twin fielding and CPQ within Revenue Cloud, and other ways that you can automate your business using AI and Salesforce. Thanks. Thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to help you automate your business. Please like, comment, or subscribe for more.